extend my thanks to the organizers of Diabetes India, this 13th International Conference. After listening to Dr. Bansi Sabu on the holistic management of the metabolic disorders and the very complex topic of diabetic cystopathy by Dr. Sujay Majumdar, what I am trying to do is that I am trying to make it little lighter for you all. But a very important topic and that is the diabetic gastroparesis. All our patients of diabetes, they do come to us with these symptoms. And I will take you through the overview of what are the causes, how we diagnose this and management of non-pharmacological, pharmacological and finally we conclude. I will not go through these global emergencies of diabetes because we all know about what IDF, what ADA, what RSSDI, they all say about this and these are the various estimates and projections. But I'll take you through this relative risk of the development of diabetic complications if you see a different mean levels of HPA1C. And progression to the clinical neuropathy, progression to albuminuria, macroalbuminuria and sustained progression of retinopathy. So retinopathy comes at the top. When we talk of the diabetic gastroparesis, it is a potential complication that occurs in the setting of poorly controlled diabetes. So one very important is poorly controlled diabetes resulting from dysfunction in the coordination and function of the autonomic nervous system. Now the diabetic cystopathy is again a part of the, the autonomic nervous system involvement and the cardiac autonomic neuropathy is also there and this is also very important neurons and specialized pacemaker cells of the stomach and the intestine and the smooth muscle cells of the gastrointestinal tract. The pathophysiology is there is loss of the interstitial shell of the casal that is the pacemaker cells. There is smooth muscle atrophy, there is extrinsic denervation, there is altered function of the immune cells that is the macrophages and there is loss of the nitric oxide in the enteric nerves results in the impaired inhibitory input to the smooth muscles. So this is all the causes of the diabetic gastroparesis. Coming to the pathophysiological mechanism of diabetic gastroparesis, the extrinsic denervation of the stomach leads to delayed gastric emptying. The loss of nitric oxide synthetase in the enteric nerves leads to impaired inhibitory inputs. Then the altered function of the immune cells such as type 2 macrophages that is there is loss of the cytokine factors resulting in the damage and then there is loss of the ICC that is the casualopathy and the smooth muscle atrophy. So the glucose and gastric emptying they are they have a bi-directional relationship when there is increased rate of the gastric emptying because of the relative hypoglycemia and there is decreased rate of the gastric emptying because of the relative hyperglycemia and the glucose entry to the small intestine stimulates the release of gut hormones so there is a great role of the gut hormones also. Now when we talk of the causes of the gastroparesis they are not only diabetes the surgical causes are vagotomy and gastric resection that is drainage, fundoplication, esophagectomy, gastric bypass surgery, Whipple's procedure, heart and lung transplant, all cakes, certain type of infections like the virus infections, the Chagas disease, Clostridium botulinum, then the central nervous system disorders like the cerebrovascular accident or trauma, tumor, seizures, but when we come the Neuropsychiatric disorder also like the anorexia nervosa, bulimia and the rumination syndrome, dipetological, peripheral nervous system disorders also. But when we talk of the endocrine and metabolic diseases, diabetes is there, hypothyroid is there, electrolyte disorders, renal failure, pregnancy and the various miscellaneous neuromuscular diseases like amyloidosis, chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction and the myotonic dystrophy. Symptoms are very very common and vague. So any patient coming with vomiting, nausea, early satiety, weight loss or weight gone, gain, postperineal fullness, bloating, constipation and or diarrhea, wide glycemic fluctuations and the abdominal pain. Any diabetic patient coming off any of these symptoms do consider that this patient may be having 
diabetic gastroparesis and the complications esophagitis may be steer from the chronic nausea or vomiting there may malnutrition volume depletion with acute renal failure electrolyte disturbances major formation hyperglycemia emergencies including the diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperosmolar hyperglycemia syndrome so don't just don't think that this is a very very simple thing do not ignore the patient's complaint of this at time the diabetic patient may only present with these symptoms and there is a lot battery of diagnostic test from the present presence of symptoms abdominal bloating abdominal pain anorexia early satiety nausea as i told you so before we go to the diagnostic specific diagnostic tools we must listen to the patient take a proper history look after the diabetic control of the patient if the diabetic control is not there if there is a long standing diabetes patient must be having autonomic dysfunction where other systems are in also involved and analyze for other associated metabolic disorders like the thyroid then abdominal imaging like the plain radiograph computed tomography mri endoscopy esophagoduodenoscopy gastric emptying studies scintigraphy i'll tell you little in detail in the next slides the gastric scintigraphy wireless modulity capsules then the radio opaque markers trans abdominal ultrasound electrogastrography magnetic resonance imaging and all these studies are being done by the gastroenterologist in their lab so the gastric function in diabetic gastroparesis assessed by the ultrasound in this one particular study 58 patients with symptoms of diabetic gastroparesis were examined with gastric emptying scintigraphy and a liquid meal gastric ultrasound test and these patients with gastroparesis they reported the same upper gi symptoms lord as the diabetic patients with normal gastric emptying so repeated ultrasound measurement revealed a slower proximal gastric emptying rate in gastroparesis patients and the proximal stomach measurement correlated well to the scintigraphy results now this is the percentage shown in the percentage emptied you can see on the right hand side and then look for the differential diagnosis whether this patient has gastric outlet obstruction or there is rumination syndrome you must be knowing that what rumination syndrome is that the patient regurgitates the semi digested food from the stomach it comes to the mouth again then he starts he or she starts chewing again you must have seen in the animals that they chew it and then either they take it back or they throw it out so this is the rumination syndrome then there may be functional dyspepsia many of the patient coming to us with functional dyspepsia we simply say it, there is nothing and we have seen many of the gastroenterologist just prescribing anti anxiety drug to these patients without even looking what the cause is then chronic pancreatitis and the biliary colic so we have to differentiate between these now how to manage such patients the non pharmacological approach is the development of gastroparesis is associated with poor glucose control and the goal of optimal glycemic control needs to be emphasized and we should use the drugs which does not cause the gastric symptoms patients with gastroparesis diabetic gastroparesis often present with gastric comorbidities including the gastroesophageal reflux disease intestinal dysmotility and fungal and bacterial infections of the gi tract as well as with the macro and microvascular complications of diabetes so look for the other diabetic complications also therefore effective management of patients with diabetic gastroparesis often requires an interdisciplinary approach with the involvement of a team of specialists including the primary care physician the gastroenterologist endocrinologist dietitian psychologist interventional radiologist and the surgeon now the nutritional management example of low fat foods dairy products like the lean meat poultry fish fruit vegetable grains and the cereals and low fiber foods like the butter oil white bread white rice milk containing foods fish eggs and the poultry 
Life style intervention is very important. Behavior modification and the alternative therapy like the patient and family education and improved awareness of the condition form an integral part of the treatment plan. Disabling chronic symptoms of gastroparesis have a profound impact on the patient's sense of well-being and personal and social life. And patients should be informed that a number of drugs might be tried in an attempt to discover the optimal therapeutic regime and that the aim of treatment is to control rather than cure of this disorder. So have a counseling of the patient, sit with the patient, spend some time. Now the pharmacological approaches. Over the last decade, the therapeutic armamentarium for diabetes expanded at a remarkable pace to include drugs with novel pathways and also device technologies. And for those with type 2 diabetes, Incretin mimetics and sodium glucose transporter SGLT2 inhibitors have been game changer with major trials proving significant cardiovascular benefits. And in patients with diabetic gastroparesis, glycemic goal and choice of pharmacotherapy should be individualized along with the nutrition and lifestyle modifications. The various drugs which are being used, the prokinetics, which is a class of drug that increases the rate of gastric emptying, Recommended by American College of Gastro to improve the gastric emptying and symptoms of gastroparesis. Metoclopramide, a prokinetic drug with dopamine 2 receptor and 5-ST3 receptor antagonizing properties is the first line therapy often used. And this is the dose. Dosing for the adults, what is the maximum dose, what are the warnings. Very important warning regarding metoclopramide is tardive, tardive dyskinesia. And we all must have experienced with our patient at least once about this side effect of the drug. And there are certain contraindications, history of type 2 diabetes or dystonic tardive dyskinesia or dystonic reaction to the metoclopramide. So once it happens, please do not use the drug. Then special population like xeretic use the lowest effective dose. Pregnancy and increase in risk of the adverse pregnancy related outcome has not been reported. The another very frequently used drug that is the domperidone, a type 2 dopamine antagonist, effectiveness similar to that of metoclopramide in elevating symptoms of gastroparesis but without extra pyramidal side effects as with metoclopramide making it a suitable treatment option for gastroparesis. ECG monitoring is recommended one week after therapy initiation those who are at high risk of QT prolongation because this drug causes QT prolongation. And it should be stopped when the corrected QT interval is more than 450 milliseconds in men and more than 470 milliseconds in women. And these are the various doses of this drug. Then erythromycin, macrolide group of antibiotic and motilin agonist, another treatment option for improving the symptoms of gastroparesis and gastric emptying. Intravenous administration recommended when this prokinetic agent is chosen for hospitalized patients and oral is considered in patients who have failed treatment with metoclomide and domperidone. And these are the doses. 3 mg per kg IV administered or 45 minutes every 8 hours. Maximum dose is 4 grams per day. Contraindication is known hypersensitivity to the drug. And when talking terfenadine or estimizol, then we should avoid this drug. Then the anti-emetic drugs, they can be considered in patients with gastroparesis who are experiencing symptoms of nausea and vomiting. These agents do not improve gastric emptying and are used only for the symptom management of the patient. And the most common agents are phenothiazine including the proclopyrazine and anti including the promethazine. Now, tricyclic antidepressants. Dr. Sujo has also talked about tricyclic antidepressants. The diabetic peripheral neuropathy people also talk about the tricyclic antidepressants. Depression, the psychiatrists also talk about tricyclic antidepressants. And they are also used here in refractory nausea and vomiting patients. And complain of abdominal pain. So pain management should be considered when treating the gastroparesis. Enhanced glycemic control and reported to reduce the symptoms of nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain with low doses. 
we should start with low doses now there are certain other approaches also for the management and they are gastric electrical stimulation for a subset of patient with severe refractive gastroparesis that is unresponsive to medical therapy this gs may be an option it improves nausea vomiting quality of life and nutritional status in patients with refractive diabetic gastroparesis three principal methods of gs have been described that is the gastric electrical pacing high frequency gastric electrical stimulation and the sequential neural electrical stimulation but practically how many people are doing it how many of the gastroenterologist or the neurologist are doing it i really do not know because this is not my field coming to the surgical options a significant number of patients that is refractory to medical management can be referred to the surgeon surgery is the last resort due to the risk of complications associated with these procedures and the main role of surgery is to palliative symptoms decompressing the stomach thereby providing access for internal nutrition and enhancing the gastric venting gastrostomy or jejunostomy and then gastro gastrectomy complete com completion or subtotal gastrectomy so these are the various surgical procedures and which are to be decided by the gastro surgeon the clinical implication of this diabetic gastroparesis has a wide spectrum of expression from asymptomatic to severe symptoms that may lead to dehydration and nutritional complication if left untreated early identification normalization of blood glucose and reduction of glucose variability can limit the consequences of this condition it can cause great difficulty in controlling post meal glucose excursions because food absorption can become unpredictable in these patients and individuals with gastroparesis who take perennial insulin may need to delay their insulin doses after they eat to ensure that they have been able to keep the food down not vomiting before taking insulin insulin pump therapy can sometimes be helpful in these patients because it allows for frequent small boluses and the pump can be suspended if glucose level trends towards low other complications from gastroparesis include the dehydration and malnutrition from loss of vitamins nutrients especially in those who are experiencing frequent vomitings and because of the frequent changes in amount and rate of blood food passing through the stomach blood glucose levels may constantly be changing making glycemic control even more difficult finally these patients might have a poor quality of life because of the need to continuously deal with flare ups symptoms that interfere with their daily lives inability to eat solid food and frequent hospitalization so this condition of gastroparesis and the symptoms of the patient they should be honored to conclude it is a severe complication resulting from uncontrolled diabetes that impairs quality of life and increases comorbid conditions and mortality and this complication is characterized by bloating nausea vomiting weight loss and early satiety an initial management includes modifying the diet restoring fluid and electrolyte and controlling glycemic levels and those with persistent symptoms may require the pharmacological or surgical therapy so not only gastric this gastroparesis the other very important thing in diabetes is the gut microbiota so any patient coming with any symptoms suggestive of any gi disorder in a diabetic patient we must consider the gut microbiota we must consider this complication of diabetes the diabetic gastroparesis we simply should not say that this patient is fanning and this is not very significant with that i thank you all for the thank you very much